My work involves the design of algorithms to simulate complex physical and engineering systems on a computer. We develop these algorithms, we analyze them, we understand them, we implement them on state-of-the-art supercomputers, and we work with other domain scientists like physicists, engineers, biologists, doctors to implement and to realize these algorithms to predict real-world phenomena in astrophysics, in solar physics, geophysics, uh, climate modeling, in engineering. So the systems that we look at, they are complex, they're non-linear, small changes in the input have large consequences, big changes in the output. So you have to confront this non-linearity, this presence of multiple scales. So avalanches are a major natural risk in Switzerland and there is a excellent research group on avalanches at the Swiss uh, Snow Research Institute in Davos in Switzerland. But they design a software which is heavily used for avalanche prediction and one of their biggest customers is actually the Indian Army. So of course I had to be interested. <laughs> Besides the equations that govern the behavior, the dynamics of avalanches are very similar to the ones that govern the behavior of tsunamis. And I have done a lot of work on tsunamis so it was a very natural way to extend it to avalanches. And mathematics plays a key role because to predict an avalanche or the dynamics of an avalanche, you need to numerically simulate or solve some nonlinear partial differential equations. The whole thing is a mathematical exercise. In my opinion, it's only a semantic one. There is no real difference because the methods, the tools, the rigor, the precision are exactly the same. However, perhaps the difference is that an applied mathematician looks at problems, at questions that have a shorter time horizon for application. A pure mathematician's work is more driven by purely mathematical questions, not so much by applications, and the time horizon is longer. It could be 50 years, it could be 100 years, it could be never. Uh, mathematics is somehow the common language of science. Uh, it's obvious for physical and engineering sciences, but more and more in biological sciences and also in social sciences, in economics, mathematical methods, mathematical tools, mathematical rigor and precision. So at one go you can see different phenomena which appear completely disconnected in one frame and mathematics allows you to do that. One has to have some intuition about what works, what doesn't work, the right idea has to come. So intuition is absolutely vital. But it also comes as an iterative process. So you have an idea and then you try to test it out, maybe on the computer, maybe on pen and paper. You see something works, something doesn't work, so you iterate. And uh, it's in the process of iteration that intuition plays a big starting point. So I have certain fundamental projects or certain fundamental questions that I want to answer. One of them is understanding the basic mathematical structure of the equations that govern fluid flows, particularly when the fluid flows are turbulent, complex, uh, nonlinear, have many scales. Another is just having faster algorithms. So if you have faster algorithms, uh, then we have a chance that there will be more democratization of science. And what I aspire someday is to be able to simulate very complex phenomena on smaller computers, for instance, on a mobile phone. I was very surprised, very honored, because this prize is, uh, has a very prestigious list of winners and is also probably, arguably, the most important uh, science prize in India today. So I was delighted, I was honored, surprised, but at the same time, happy. <laughs>